Once upon a time, there was a woman who longed for a child of her own. So she went to a witch to ask for help. The witch gave her a little seed and said, "Plant it in a pot, then wait and see what happens." The woman thanked the witch, went home, and planted the seed. Every day she took care of it, very carefully, tending it with lots of water and sunshine. Abracadabra, abracadabra. Plant this seed in a flower pot, then wait and see what happens. <laughs> Thank you so much. The seed quickly grew into a fine, large flower, with its petals tightly folded, as if it were still a bud. What a pretty flower! Exclaimed the woman, and she kissed the petals. As she did. The petals burst open. Do you know what she saw? It was a very beautiful girl in the center of the flower. The woman was delighted and called the girl Thumbelina, since she was no bigger than the tip of her thumb. <sighs> what a pretty flower! Mum, mum! Oh, my little child. I'll call you Thumbelina. Then the woman made for Thumbelina a bed from a polished walnut shell, a mattress from the blue petals of violets, and a blanket from a rose petal. The two lived together very happily. One night, when Thumbelina was sleeping, a big, ugly, slimy toad crept through a broken pane of glass in the window. And jumped into her room. Wow, she looks so beautiful. She's a perfect wife for my son. The toad exclaimed when she saw Thumbelina. Then she picked up the walnut shell and hopped with it back to her home in the garden. Wow, she looks so beautiful. She's a perfect wife for my son. The toad lived in the mud by the edge of a stream in the garden with her son. He was even uglier than his mother, and he fell in love with Thumbelina at first sight. The mother toad set the walnut shell down on the biggest lotus leaf so that Thumbelina couldn't escape. When the little girl woke up, she cried bitterly as all she could see around her was water. After decorating the room where her son and his bride would live, the mother toad swam out with her son to the leaf on which Thumbelina sat. Crop, crop, crocketetex was all that her son could say. Thumbelina sat and cried on the green leaf. She didn't want to marry that horrible toad and live with him under the mud. Where am I? Why am I here? Hey, girl, cheer up! I'm coming to take you home with me. <laughs> My darling, go home with me. The little fishes who swam in the water beneath Thumbelina heard what she had said. They felt sorry for the beautiful girl, so they swam up to the stalk that held the leaf and gnawed away at it to rescue her. Then the leaf floated down the stream, carrying Thumbelina far enough away that the ugly toads couldn't catch her. <laughs> Poor girl, she looks so pretty. I don't like the old toad and her son at all. We must help her. Thumbelina sailed past many towns with beautiful landscapes. Suddenly, a beetle gripped her in its claws, lifted her off the leaf, and flew with her into a tree. Then it fed her nectar from the flowers. The other beetles who lived in the tree came to look at her, saying that Thumbelina was ugly. 
The beetle who had flown away with her decided that they were right, and would have nothing to do with her. It left Thumbelina on a daisy. She wept at the thought that she was so ugly that even the beetles would have nothing to say to her. My goodness, how can you take an ugly creature like her home? Look, she has only two legs. She hasn't any wings. How ugly that looks! <laughs> hmm, she's ugly. I have nothing more to say to her. <laughs> Poor me. Is it true that I'm very ugly? Thumbelina lived alone in the wide forest. She wove herself a hammock of grass and hung it under a big leaf to keep off the rain. She ate nectar from the flowers and drank the early morning dew off the leaves. The summer and fall went by, and then came the winter. All the birds who had sung so sweetly for her flew away. Snow began to fall. Every snowflake that fell felt like a stone on Tiny Thumbelina. Her clothes were torn, and she wrapped herself in a dry leaf, but it didn't warm her. <laughs> Mom, I'm cold. Wandering about, Thumbelina found herself at last outside the forest in a cornfield. It was to her like struggling through a large wood. Finally, she came to the door of a field mouse. Thumbelina asked the field mouse for some food, as she'd had nothing to eat for two days. The field mouse was so pleased with the poor girl that she told her she could stay. Thumbelina happily agreed. Is there anybody home? Please, may I have something to eat? I'm hungry. Oh, you poor little thing! Come into my warm room and dine with me. One day, a mole, who was the field mouse's neighbor, visited them. He was very rich. He had large rooms and wore a beautiful black velvet coat. But he disliked the sun. And the pretty flowers. When the mole came to visit, Thumbelina had to sing to him. Her voice was so sweet that he fell in love with her and wanted to marry her. La 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 la. Field mouse, I like that little girl. I want to marry her. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's her great pleasure to have you as her husband. <laughs> the mole dug a long tunnel that linked their houses together and told the field mouse and Thumbelina to use it whenever they liked. In the tunnel, there was a dead swallow that had apparently died of the cold. Thumbelina felt so sorry for the swallow that she sang sweetly to him in the summer. She wove a small blanket of hay and spread it over the bird. Then she laid her head on its heart. Suddenly, she felt a soft thump, as if something were beating inside. This was the bird's heart. He wasn't dead. He was only numb with cold. And now that he had been warmed, he came to life again. Farewell, pretty bird. Thank you for singing to me during the summer. Ah, you're alive again! You're alive again! Then Thumbelina took care of the swallow, bringing him water and food every day. The swallow was very grateful to the tiny girl. When spring came, the bird asked Thumbelina to go with him. She could sit on his back as they flew away, but she refused, as it would make the field mouse very sad if she left her in that manner. Thumbelina was very upset as she watched the bird fly away. She wasn't allowed to go out in the warm sunshine. The grain that was planted in the field grew high into the air and formed a thick wood to Thumbelina. Thumbelina, 
Would you like to go with me to a land where the sun always shines? No, I can't. If I go, it will make the field mouse very sad. Have a good trip. Farewell, you pretty little bird. One day, the field mouse told Thumbelina that she would marry the mole as soon as summer was past. But the tiny girl didn't like the mole at all and didn't want to live underground in the dark. When fall arrived, Thumbelina had her outfit quite ready. The field mouse told her that in four weeks, the wedding must take place. But Thumbelina cried and said she wouldn't marry the mole. Don't you be obstinate, the field mouse said. You're getting a superb husband. The king himself doesn't have a black velvet coat as fine as his. You ought to thank goodness that you're getting him. Wow, your outfit is quite ready. Your wedding day is four weeks off. No, no, I don't want to marry him. Don't be obstinate! You're getting a superb husband! You ought to thank goodness that you're getting him! Then came the wedding day. Thumbelina stood at the door to look at the sun once more. Goodbye, bright sun, she said. Chirp, chirp! Sounded over her head suddenly. She looked up, and there was the swallow. The swallow was delighted to see Thumbelina. Then she told him how sad she felt to marry the mole and to live underground. Go with me, the bird said. I'll take you to a land where the sun always shines. Farewell, bright sun. Farewell, farewell. Oh, it's you, pretty little bird. Thumbelina, let's get out of here. Sit on my back and we'll fly away. Thumbelina climbed up on the swallow's back and tied her sash to his feathers. They flew over forests and over seas, high above the highest mountains covered with snow. Then they came to the warm countries where the sun shone brightly, a land that was full of blue grapes, lemons, and oranges. But the swallow flew on still farther, and it became more and more beautiful. Great! Let's fly, swallow! <laughs> Thumbelina, hold me tight. We'll fly to a more beautiful land. At last, they came to an ancient palace. The swallow put Thumbelina on the most beautiful flower nearby. She was surprised to find, in the center of the flower, a little man as fine and tiny as her. In every flower there lived a tiny person just like him, but he was the prince of this land. He fell in love with Thumbelina at first sight and asked her to be his wife. The charming girl happily agreed. Then Thumbelina had wings fixed to her back so that she could fly from flower to flower. Everyone rejoiced, and the swallow sang his very best songs for the couple, who lived happily ever after. The adventure of Thumbelina is thrilling, isn't it? The kind girl often helped and shared with other people, so she got lots of good things when she was in trouble. You should do as many good things for others as possible so that your life will be more and more beautiful. Goodbye, and see you again. Will you marry me and be queen of all the flowers? Yes, I do.